As many of you guessed from the last video, this week we are talking about parking tickets in Denmark. We're the Youngs. We've spent our lives traveling the world. And in 2018, we moved from Chicago, Illinois, to Copenhagen, Denmark. Now we want to share with you how our new lives abroad is keeping us young. Keeping us young. Are helping to keep us young. All right. This is a tough one. I prefer not to complain about things. I want to stay positive on this channel. But these parking tickets and the fact that I just got one a couple days ago, I felt it was time to bring it up. So much so that I'm standing and not even sitting for this because I'm a bit worked up. Because ah, this is just a tough one to swallow. I mean, I'm sorry, these yellow strips here, which ironically are the same color as the Swedish flag, are just like a nightmare. When you see it, like what happens is we come out and we often don't notice it in the car and then we start driving and we see it like flickering in the wind as we're driving along in the windshield and we're like, oh, and your heart sinks and you're like, oh, oh come on, what happened? So this is not the first time that I've gotten a ticket though. Let me tell you quickly about the other two times I've gotten tickets since we've lived here. It's basically one a year. I need to just start budgeting this once a year. The first time was in Herlu, which is close to where we live. There's a food text there, a big BO, there's a bunch of stuff. And I went to the food text to get some food. And in that parking lot, you can park for free for a couple hours, but you need to set the disc to indicate the time at which you parked. So in cars in Denmark, there's this little circular disc and you say, this is when I parked here. And then in this case, from two hours from that point forward, you can park for free. If you're there longer, then they give you a ticket. Or in our case, if you don't set the disc, then they'll give you a ticket because this is not something we ever had to deal with in the US. I've never had to deal, I mean, it's, you have to train your mind to remember to set this disc. It's not something in the, you know, 20 plus years I've been driving, I ever had to do, so I'd forget. Especially if I'm just going to a grocery store for just a few minutes to run inside and get something and go out. It's easy to not remember that. That's what happened, and I got a ticket. So then I said, I'm gonna get myself an electrical disc so that when the car stops, it automatically sets it, and I don't have to remember it. That worked beautifully for like 14 months until the battery died, and I didn't realize it, and I got to take it again in the exact same parking lot. Also because of the disc not being set because the battery was dead and I didn't know it so it didn't display a time. So the first two tickets were in the exact same parking lot for the disc, the parking disc being a problem. And here's the thing, like, I, I mean, it seems I'm still unable to process the fact that I have to remember this when I go to a grocery store. I mean, the business should make it easy for customers to be able to come and go easily without risk of having to pay some huge fine because it only discourages me from wanting to go shop there. Of course, tons of parking garages and places have the same issue, but still it just, I mean, this is a big difference in the US, this kind of thing. I mean, there's city parking rules, but when you go to a strip mall, this is not something that happens. And it's really just, it doesn't make anything safer or anything better. It's just a way to get money from people. And it's so frustrating to have to spend $700 when all I, I'm sorry, 700 krona, $100, just because I made a mistake when I went to go and get something at the grocery store. So, I mean, I get it and I swallowed it and I paid it, even though I wasn't very happy. Cause sure, there's signs that tell you to remember to do it, but it's excessive. If it was like 200 krona or 300 krona, maybe I'd feel a little different, but 700 is so much. But that was the first two times. The third time happened just a few days ago and it happened in a parking garage that I paid to park in. We remembered and we paid. That wasn't the problem. But you're gonna have to wait a minute to find out what happened because it's Tuesday and today's tried on Tuesday. So. A few weeks ago, we were down in Sunabur and we tried something that everybody told us we needed to do because we've talked about deviled eggs. And well, Sunabur has a very special egg concoction that we tasted when we were there. So let's go to that right now, right here, Try It On Tuesday. We've been given our eggs. Yes. 
We're very excited. So we've been given our instructions and all of our accoutrements. So this is the egg and the egg is hard boiled and then they kind of crack it a little bit. You can see the cracks and then they basically brine it in like water and salt uh, for 24 hours. And then, so now we have our egg and then we're going to cut it in half. We'll peel it and then cut it in half and then take the yolk out. And then in the hole, you put whatever of whatever these. Whatever you want, want. all that stuff. So we have Tabasco, we have some oil, some mustard, some vinegar, and then some bitters, which normally you put that in cocktails, but okay. we'll see. <laughs> and then you stick the yolk back and on. And then you put all of that in the hole, and then you stick the yolk back in, and you eat it all one half in one bite, and then chase it with your snaps. And then this, whoa, it's out of focus. Yo. And this afterwards. Yes. It's all dramatic with the egg yeah. in the background, <laughs> what we're about to do. So, so let's give it a try. here but <laughs> Miranda's gonna eat first. I'm gonna eat mine first. So I've got mustard and oil and vinegar and so we're gonna give it a try. Jam it. Mmm. <laughs> oh that's good. Mm -hmm. Don't eat all the schnapps. You still got half an egg left. All right. Mmm. I'm gonna hand the camera over. Okay. I did all that plus a little Tabasco sauce. Oh. And mine are in better shape than yours. Yeah. Just to be clear. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job. Here we go. What's the verdict? It's, I mean, it's got this very salty, salty. Yeah. very salty, but. But I mean, it's good. I think uh, I'm not against it at all. No, it was very good. Very I liked good. It's interesting. Lot. I was concerned <laughs> by the pictures of something that looks like some like dinosaur look, egg found in the, you know. It does look slightly alien. Yeah, but no. Super good. Thumbs up on this week's Trout on Tuesday. Yeah. Soul egg. We did it, guys. We did it. Ooh. All right. I'm back. Soul Egg, definitely very good. Thank you for the recommendation. I would absolutely encourage you to try one if you haven't yet. I thought it was very good. A little salty, but um, a lot of people sprinkle that salt on top of their hard boiled eggs. And uh, I mean, it's, I think we're gonna try it. We'll try it again at some point at home, maybe try to make it because it was good. I liked it, Miranda really liked it. Um, but back to the conclusion of the story. So this ticket, what happened was, we were at Tivoli last Thursday for a special lunch on our anniversary. And uh, we parked at the Axel Towers across the street, went to Tivoli, had lunch, and then we left, came back, got in the car, started driving away, saw the little flickering in the, in the windshield of the little Swedish flag ticket. And uh, we pulled over, pulled it out, and Miranda read it, and it said, parked outside the box, the parking space box. And uh, yeah, so we, we paid to park in the garage because it's a garage, so we immediately paid like we normally would. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, that wasn't sufficient. They wanted more money from me, apparently. And this, this is what I remember. So because we drove away before we saw the ticket, I didn't really revisit how my parking was. But in my memory, what happened was we drove into a space and there was a pole and I was afraid that Miranda would not be able to open her car door because of this pole on the right side. So we, par I remember parking slightly to the left so she'd have room to open her door. 
But I also remember that there was no parking space to the left of me, so I would not be blocking any car from parking. And I also remember there was no marking on the ground, on the concrete, that would indicate that that would be bad, that that would cause a problem to be slightly over. So um, I remember going just a little bit, at least, because of this pole. Um, I also don't remember seeing any signs that say if you park slightly outside of the box, it's going to cost you 795 krona. So that was a surprise. Um, and I also do remember that the, the, there's like a box painted on the, on the parking uh, lot in the space. And that is a very narrow box, much narrower than the width of my car. And so if I were to park still over the box, but off to the left slightly, then the left tire would actually seem like it's pretty far from the box because the box itself is narrower than the car. So you figure car is wide, this is narrow, you park the car over a little bit, well, this is gonna be off to the side a little. So it would appear to be bigger, uh, you know, much more out of the space than it really is because the space itself is so tiny. So I, the problem is I get the ticket and I log in and I like try to see if there's any photos of, and there's nothing, there's no photos that show how far I was to justify that I was in fact, you know, interfering with something or so far out of the space that I don't know how to park. And so it's really frustrating because there's nothing that even shows. And because I drove away, I didn't take any pictures because I didn't think anything of it when I left. It wasn't until I was driving that I saw this ticket. So to me, from my perspective, obviously I'm a bit biased because I don't want to pay 795 krona, but to me, it feels really arbitrary that somebody can just write a ticket and say, out of the box, ticket 795 krona. I mean, without even supplying any proof or anything that indicates that that's something that one, somebody would have been aware of. And that's where I have a problem with this, is it feels like it's arbitrary and it also is excessive in the cost, especially since they would have known that I paid to park there because I'm sure they would have checked for that too. So I paid to park in the lot and then they also added this 795 krona on top of it. So this is my story this time. This wasn't a parking disc. I'll accept some responsibility there. This one is, a, is even harder to swallow. It's also a bit raw because it's like, like recent, just a couple days ago. So of course, what am I gonna do from here is I'm gonna write an email, which I know, I know, I get it. Miranda's like, why are you gonna bother? It's gonna waste your time. I know that it's not gonna do anything. I get it. But it's gonna make me feel like a little bit better. Just like, just a little bit. I'd love to feel a little bit better. This video, by the way, also makes me feel a little bit better. So this little bit from the video, plus that other little bit from writing the email makes me feel a lot better. And then I won't feel as mad when I pay the ticket, maybe. I don't know, I'm sure I'll still be irritated, but that made me feel just like a little bit better. So I'm gonna send an email for no reason, and it's gonna go to somebody and they're not gonna answer, or they'll answer and say, sorry, Josh, you gotta pay it anyway. But it's just, uh, you know, I mean, this. I love so many things about Denmark, and we stay really positive when we talk about all the positive things and try not to be negative, but this parking stuff is something that just like eats at me because I don't feel like, I don't feel like I, th that these situations are ones that cause harm to people. I mean, it doesn't hurt anybody, doesn't hurt anything. I wasn't preventing other people from parking. In fact, the whole parking lot was basically empty and it, it's just like a way, it felt like, it feels like a way to just take money from people and that I have a serious problem with that as I'm sure you guys do too. So if any of you have an interesting parking parking ticket, yellow strip of just whatever story, tell it to me in the comments and I am on your side. So let's like band together and, and be you know, united as one frustrated with this private parking situation that makes it just annoying to, to park places. Also, I will say, cause I know some people say, well, just solve that problem by not having a car. But I mean, some things we just unfortunately need a car for, like this very moment, I'm by myself because Maria and Maya are driving to Hundestol for Maya to go to after school. And that would be really difficult to do without a car. There's trains, but with COVID and the school rules, it's not good for her to get on trains because she could potentially you know, contract COVID and mess up everything at the after school because of all the testing and all the things that happen. It's just better for us to drive her. So we need to drive around occasionally. And in that case, we need to get the city and back as quickly as possible because it was in the middle of the workday. So there you have it. That's the story of ticket number three. Let's hope that we won't have another one, but it feels like a yearly parking tax that I'm paying. So that said, I'm gonna take another. Mm -hmm. That helps a little bit, I mean, just like a little bit, but that helps too. 
So stay tuned for Friday because on Friday we have a special video. We drove to Sunabor recently, as we've mentioned on a few videos, and uh, it's time to post the first one from that trip. And what we did is we like to drive for some of these kinds of trips because we want to stop in places along the way that wouldn't be possible without a car. And so we stopped in the Yelling Stones, even though I know it's a little bit out of the way from here to Sunabor, but we drove up to see the Yelling Stones and that was really cool. And we got to talk to the curator of the museum and he gave us a ton of information about the Yelling Stones. So definitely stick around for that on Friday. We also visited a brewery in Cooling, which was awesome. And uh, I mean, that was fantastic. I mean, beer, you know, right? And then I also recorded the entire drive across the Great Belt Bridge, which I affectionately call the Nightmare Bridge because I can't swim and I'm afraid of heights and it basically combines everything together into me feeling like I'm driving up into the clouds and uh, uh, don't like it, but I'm gonna talk through a few points. I'm not gonna make you sit through the entire ride, but there are a few points that I think, you know, I can indicate when I get super nervous on the bridge. And at one point we actually passed these people that were raising one of these like building window washer platforms that they were gonna, I guess, go up the tower on this like flimsy platform and that's, oh my God, I was like, that's, I couldn't believe that when I, when we drove, I'm like, that is insane. I don't even like being in my car on this bridge. I can't imagine being on some like platform that's just like in the wind. So we did this, drove across the bridge and I got a few bit of commentary as I react to the drive across the bridge and that's gonna be on Friday. So stay tuned for that. Until then though, we appreciate everything as always. Always, this has been just a tremendous experience for us so far. It continues to be tremendous when we meet people. We've had so many people stop us when we're out on the street now and in various places saying they like the channel and they appreciate what we do. We appreciate you guys more than you realize. If you see us, please give us like a nice elbow bump and tell us hello. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to know that people enjoy what we do and we love to hear you know, the uh, video that you remember that's meant something to you or you thought was interesting. So that helps us understand the type of content we should create. Um, and it's just been remarkable. And that continues to happen now that we're able to go out a little bit more. And it's just, I mean, we're so grateful. I can't even express how much it means to, to us. I know I'm the only one talking right now, but I'm speaking for Miranda and Maya as well and Brisket who has no idea, but he also likes to be pet. So... No, really, it, it is fantastic. We appreciate everything, and we hope that you uh, continue to enjoy what we do and follow us along on these journeys. we got summer coming up, and there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to do a little bit more as things have opened, and we're starting to get vaccinated. Maya actually just got a notice that she's signed up, and she's getting her first vaccination next weekend. So slowly, we're also going to be on track to be able to to experience even more of Denmark and this this place that, that we love, as long as we don't have issues with parking. I'm going to end it with that. So until next time, we'll see you. Bye-bye.